Welcome. On this lesson, we're going to take a look at the idea of triangle congruency, and we're going to concentrate on two techniques, the technique of angle, side, angle, and angle, angle, side. Let's start by discussing the idea of angle, side, angle. What the angle, side, angle congruence theorem says is, if we have two triangles, which in this case, we have them as A, B, C, and D, E, F. If we're able to identify a set of congruent angles. So let's say that angle A is congruent to angle D. And then it's followed by a set of congruent sides. So let's say that AC is congruent to DF. And then it's followed by another set of congruent angles. So let's say that angle C is congruent to angle F. If we have this combination of an angle followed by a congruent side followed by a congruent angle, which in this case, that's what we have here, then we can claim that these two triangles are congruent. In this case, we can claim that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DE. And one thing to notice is that we have two congruent angles and we have one congruent side. But notice that the side is within the two congruent angles. So essentially, what we're trying to say here is that if two congruent angles, so if we have two congruent angles, and the included side of one triangle are congruent to two angles and the included side of a second triangle, then we can claim that the two triangles are congruent. Let's take a look at the following illustration. So what we have here is just some triangle. And notice that we want to concentrate on those two angles, the red angle and the blue angle, and the side between those two angles, which is shown as a horizontal dark line. Well, what would happen if we copy one of those angles? So let's say we get the red angle and we copy it somewhere else. And then what happens if we copy the following side? So we have two congruent angles, two congruent sides, and then we copy a second angle, which is a blue angle. So notice that right now, if we stop right here on the figure on the right hand side, we have a congruent angle followed by a congruent side and then followed by a congruent angle. Well, notice that if we do that, essentially what we have done, we have recreated or we have copied the original triangle that we started with. And therefore, we can claim that those two triangles are congruent to each other. And notice what we have done. We copy two angles and then we copy a side between them two. Therefore, we have angle side angle. Let's just do this one more time, a little bit faster. So we have a congruent angle followed by a congruent side followed by a congruent angle. And essentially we have copied the original triangle. Therefore we can say that those two triangles are congruent. Now that we have seen that illustration, let's take a look at one example. So let's see, what do we have in this example? Well, the, the idea or the objective here is to show that there is congruency among two triangles. Triangle ABC, which is this triangle, and triangle DEC, which is this triangle. Now, before we start thinking about how do we go about this problem, let's just list the given. Let's just get it out of the way. Because the first thing that we always want to do is just list the given. So we know that AB is perpendicular to AD. And we also know that DE is perpendicular to AD. And in addition, we also know that AC is congruent to DC. So let's just put down the givens. Let's get it out of the way and let's start thinking about a strategy for this question. Well, let's go one statement at a time. If AB is congruent, I'm sorry, if AB is perpendicular to AD, then their intersection is of 90 degrees. So we have it right here. AB, or at least angle A, it's of 90 degrees. And in addition, if DE is perpendicular 
to AD, then we have another 90 degrees in here. So how about we state that? That's one thing that we can say. We can say that angle A is 90 degrees. And then we can also say that angle D it's 90 degrees as well. And the reason behind it is because of AB is perpendicular to AD. And in addition, DE is perpendicular to AD. Okay. What else do we know? We can also see that AC is congruent to CD. We have it right here. So there's no need to state it within our proof. We already stated it. And now let's pause there for a second. What is another thing that we might notice within this diagram? Well, I can see that there's an intersection going on here. And if there's an intersection going on in there, notice that we have two types of triangle angles here. Those are vertical angles. And vertical angles are congruent to each other. So let's list that. So let's say that angle ACB is congruent to angle ECD. And the reason behind it, there are vertical angles. So vertical angles. And now let's pause there for a second because notice the type of combination that we have here. We have an angle followed by a congruent side, followed by a congruent angle. And that's the same idea that we have here. We have this angle followed by this congruent side, followed by this congruent angle. So we have angle, side, angle on the left triangle. And we have angle, side, angle on the right triangle. Then we're done. Because now, because we do have that combination, then now we can just say that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEC. And the reason behind it is the angle, side, angle, congruency. So this takes care of the angle side angle congruency theorem. Let's take a look at the second technique for today. The second technique that we want to discuss is the angle angle side congruency theorem. So let's see, what does the angle angle side congruency theorem says? Well, let's say that we have two triangles. Let's call it ABC and DEF. If we're able to identify a set of congruent angles, so let's say that angle A is congruent to angle D, and then it's followed by another congruent angle. So let's say that angle C is congruent to angle F. And then it's followed by a set of congruent sides. Let's say that BC is congruent to EF. If we do have this combination, of two adjacent congruent angles followed by a congruent side, then we can claim that those two triangles are congruent. ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. So essentially, what we're trying to say here is that if two congruent angles, if we have two congruent angles and a non included side of one triangle, if they are congruent to two angles and the corresponding not included side of the second triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. Now, let's take a look at the following illustration. So notice what we have in this illustration. Here we have two triangles. And notice that we have two congruent angles, the blue and the red. And then there is a congruent side. But notice that this congruent side is not within the two angles. It is right next to the second congruent side, right next to the red angle. Well, what would happen if we change the measurement of this blue line? Well, if we change the measurement of this congruent side, it doesn't really matter. The blue and red angle are still congruent. And it doesn't, it really doesn't matter what's the length that we give to the congruent side. We're still going to end up with two congruent triangles. So as long as you have two congruent sides, I'm sorry, as long as you have two congruent angles followed by a congruent side, then you're going to end up with two congruent triangles. Now that we have seen that illustration, let's take a look at the following example. So here we have the same objective. 
we want to show that there is congruency between two triangles, triangle BAD and triangle EBC. So let's identify them. So here we have triangle BAD and here we have triangle EBC. Okay. And again, before we start thinking about how should we build our proof, let's just list our givens. Like that should be the first thing that we want to do before we even think about the proof itself. So let's just get this done. BC and okay. So I just copied down the givens. So now let me actually start thinking about the proof itself here. So let's go one statement at a time. BD is congruent to BC. So that's what we have here. BD is congruent to BC. Okay. And we also notice that AD is parallel to EC. So that's why we have this. So we have two parallel lines. Okay. So how should we think about the proof itself? I mean, I can, I can see that there's an intersection going on here. And if there's an intersection going on in there, I can see that I have created two angles and I can see that those angles are vertical. Therefore, they're congruent to each other. So let me list them. So let me say that. Let me say that angle ABD is congruent to angle CBE. And the reason behind it, they're vertical angles. Notice that we have not used the information of parallel lines. So let's see, how can we use that information to, I don't know, identify a congruent angle or a congruent side? One thing that I like to do is I like to extend the parallel lines. So let me extend the parallel lines. So AD and EC are parallel. Let me extend them. And I can identify that AE can be seen as some kind of a transversal. So now if AE is some kind of a transversal, then notice that angle A and angle E are alternate interior angles. If they are alternate interior angles, then they are congruent. Now, how is that going to help? us? Well, let me just erase that. We have already stated that angle A is congruent to angle E. So let's actually just put that down here on our proof. So perhaps my next step is that angle A is congruent to angle E and the idea behind it. These are alternate interior angles. Let's look at the order because notice that we have one. Oops, sorry. We have one, two congruent angles followed by congruent side. So that's angle angle side. And in my other triangle, I have the same one angle followed by another congruent angle and followed by a congruent side. So notice that we have angle angle side in the triangle on the left. And we also have angle angle side on the triangle on the right. So we're done. Now we can say that both of those triangles, in this case, triangle BAD is congruent to triangle EBC. And the idea behind it is the angle angle side congruence theorem. Hello. If you would like to continue to learn about mathematics, you can check out the videos on the left. 